Hallelujah. Ready for God's word? We'll start in Genesis today in chapter 18. Read the first 14 verses. Really cool story. Genesis 18. Speaking of Abraham, it says, Yahweh appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre as he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked and saw that three men stood opposite him. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please don't go away from your servant. Now let a little water be fetched, wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. I will get a morsel of bread so you can refresh your heart. After that, you may go your way, now that you have come to your servant. They said, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly prepare three siahs of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a tender and good calf and gave it to the servant. He hurried to dress it. He took butter, milk, and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. He stood by them under the tree, and they ate. They asked him, Where is Sarah, your wife? He said, See, in the tent. He said, I will certainly return to you at about this time next year. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah heard in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, will I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Yahweh said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Will I really bear a child, yet I am old? Is anything too hard for Yahweh? At the set time, I will return to you when the season comes around, and Sarah will have a son. Amen. Hallelujah. We got the rest of the story, too. She had the son. (coughs) Our next reading will be in Psalm 27, a psalm by David. Psalm 27. Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers came at me to eat my flesh, even my adversaries and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me. Even then I will be confident. One thing I have asked of Yahweh, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in Yahweh's house all the days of my life, to see Yahweh's beauty and to inquire in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me secretly in his pavilion. For in, in the covert of his tabernacle, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. Now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tent. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to Yahweh. Hear Yahweh when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also on me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, I will seek your face, Yahweh. Don't hide your face from me. Don't put your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Don't abandon me, neither forsake me, God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahweh will take me up. Teach me your way, Yahweh. Lead me in a straight path because of my enemies. Don't deliver me over to the desire of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me. 
such as breathe out cruelty. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of Yahweh in the land of the living. Wait for Yahweh. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the New Testament next in Colossians. We'll read from chapter 1. And we'll start with verse 21 and finish the chapter. You, being in past times alienated and enemies in your mind in your evil deeds, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and without defect and blameless before him, if it is so that you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast and not moved away from the hope of the good news which you heard, which is being proclaimed in all creation under heaven, of which I, Paul, was made a servant. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and fill up on my part that which is lacking of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the assembly, of which I was made a servant according to the stewardship of God which was given me toward you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden for ages and generations, but now it has been revealed to his saints, to whom God was pleased to make known what are the riches of his glo- of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory." whom we proclaim, admonishing every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man complete in Christ Jesus, for which I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Hallelujah. Amen. And we'll finish with the gospel reading from Luke today in chapter 10. We'll read the last part, starting with verse 38. This picks up right after last week's reading of the Good Samaritan. As they went on their way, he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she came up to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to serve alone? Ask her, therefore, to help me. Jesus answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. And then let's stand together. <clears throat> we'll say it ten times. That'll wind you up inside. Amen. And then we'll give the Lord the glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Yahweh. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Beautiful song. Beautiful song. Sing it to him. <clears throat> Thanks for the second wind, Lord. Thanks, Holy Spirit, for coming, giving us that second wind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
glory, hallelujah. says the Lord. I walked along the Jericho road of your life, and the Levite and the priest that turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to you and your struggles, I bested. When I came, I saw, I listened, says the Lord, and I got down where you are. Before you called, I answered. Before you prayed, I came. It was I who saw what others never see. It was I, it was I who poured in the oil and the wine and carefully wrapped the bandages around the bruised and beaten and battered places in your heart and life. It was I who provided the transportation to the healing center. It was I who paid the price for your total renovation, says the Lord and I will be the one to return and to see the finished product yes. when I finally change the last that needs changed and your body is like unto mine, indestructible, immortal, a body fit for the celestial places where you and I will reign forever and ever and ever. I do what man cannot. I am with you to deliver you yet from the muck and the mire of life in a fallen world. And for you, my beloved ones, the best is yet to come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for seeing us, Lord. Thank you for hearing the cries we never even whispered. Thank you, Lord, for knowing the unknown, seeing the unseen. Thank you for healing what is invisible to others. We bless you and give you the glory today, Master. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Finish, Lord, what you started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For, for, when, I, for when I saw you, you were on the auction block. I had been looking for you. But the evil one had you chained. He would not take 
any price, but only wanted to keep you there, to torture and maim you, not to let you go at all. But I broke your shackles, for I knew what your heart could become. And I covered your nakedness with my robe, and I lifted you up, and I carried you away. And he will never, ever, ever have that hold on you again. For you are loving me, and I am loving you, and that will not change. Praise your name, Lord. Yeah. 
Thanks, Lord. Thanks, Master. Hallelujah. You're awesome. You're awesome. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the prophet that God's glory fills the temple. Some versions say it's a train, that long cloak that trails the king. And as we're in God's presence today, I see the master himself kind of adjusting his clothing in such a way that he's like Santa Claus. And I see him waiting for us one at a time to jump up onto his lap and I see him placing around us that Santa Claus cloak. Hallelujah. Preserving, protecting, defending from all harm and providing us with only and always gifts of grace that are exactly what we would have asked for if we had only known ourselves as he knows us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the presence we wouldn't even have the knowledge to request. Thanks for knowing us better than we know ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for sending us from heaven. Thank you for breathing us into our mother's womb. Thank you for knitting us together in the secret place. Thanks for life and health and breath. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for ordering our steps and delighting in our way. Thank you, Master, by faith for finishing what you started as you returned from heaven to clothe us in a body just like the Son of God's. We give you the praise today for who you are and what you do in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> I've just been seeing this image since a couple songs ago of somebody walking and it's like they're occasionally stepping in these muddy puddles. Stuff is splashing up on them and they're so concerned looking at their clothes getting all dirty and then somebody's throwing stuff at them, getting them all messed up. People are dumping stuff on them and they're just overwhelmed because they feel like they're all dirty and stained. And it's like I hear the Lord pleading, it's not getting to the real you. Amen. All this stuff is on the tent that you're living in, that you are protected, not a hair of your head will perish. He's protected the true you, the real you. None of the things that people have done to you, none of the things that you've walked through have really stained you. It just looks like it. It looks like it, but it's only on the outside, and he's just pleading, don't worry. Don't be so concerned with the outside. It's not going to be that long. You're not going to have this outer covering very long. Don't worry about it. Don't try to get it perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Don't worry about it like if you get this messed up, then you're going to be messed up for all eternity. This is just a small sliver, and the real you is okay. Amen. He's got you. So don't worry. Don't get caught up. Don't get caught up with how it might look, how it might seem, how it might feel. Don't let those people get you off track for where you're work, walking. Don't worry about where you're walking. Praise Keep walking. God. Keep going through those money puddles, knowing that it doesn't really matter. Amen. <laughs> it's a new way to live. Just let the Lord speak to your heart. It doesn't matter. He's got you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We bless your holy name. You're awesome. Thank you, Jesus. You're awesome. Wow. That old
converted plumber turned evangelist. Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm a million times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Hallelujah. Amen. Went over budget a little bit again. Isn't that awesome? Makes up for when we don't. And some of your giving and mine goes to targeting advertising. I didn't realize. Think about that. We have gained 18 countries in about six months in our school because of the ability to target advertising. Sadly, it's not free to do that. But we're, we're helping people get prepared for ministry. And we're only... Um, about eight, eight countries shy of every, every country, and we have students in every state in the union, so that's kind of awesome, too. God's doing good things, amen? Thank you, Sandy, for volunteering to cook. And that will be the um, 7th of August. Uh, the following week, the following weekend, um, we will have service, of course, but I will be away with Solomon, but Greg will be ministering on our behalf. Uh, the Lord kind of blessed us, let us both win first place awards in different categories. His with a short script, mine with a feature. And Joe, you'd like to see that movie if it ever gets made. It's about giants. How many know the story of giants in the Old Covenant? My script is about what, happens, what would happen if another group of angels fell, produced another race of giants. So... Um, it is. And I never, as it was in the days of Noah, Jesus said, yeah. And I, nothing, never, nothing really ever came of it. And I wrote it years ago, so I just kind of did a bit of a polish. And who knew? It must have rubbed somebody the right way. So hopefully we'll get it sold. Um, and what else do we have here? I think everything's pretty much under control. The, uh, my child bride has a big birthday the end of August. So... Uh, she can take the lasagna and run the first weekend, and then by the, by the time her birthday rolls around, she'll be able to do a double dip. If you have your Bible with you today, let's turn to the Old Covenant book of Daniel. The Old Testament book of Daniel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, Daniel. No. <laughs> Daniel chapter 10, and we're looking at verse 19 today. The title of our message, The Only Voice That Matters. If you have your Bible in front of you, I'm reading from the King James. You may have another version. Daniel's Prophecy, Chapter 10. Our text is verse 19. And we're going to read verse 18, just as a little teaser, and then our text is verse 19. We're thinking today about the only voice that matters. Verse 18 of Daniel 10, Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me, and said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto you, be strong, yes, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak for you have strengthened me. I remember not too many months before my dad passed away back in 1999. He was in the bed and I went into his room and asked him how he was doing. He said, oh, okay, I guess. I'm kind of depressed. I said, what are you depressed about? He said, oh, every, everything, I guess. And uh, he didn't know, of course, although he might have surmised he would be in heaven in about three or four months. And he said, I did have a very unusual and wonderful experience the other day. I said, what was that? He said, well, you know, my health isn't what it should be. And I was thinking about that and thinking about the family and thinking about your mom. And, and I was kind of fretting about it and praying about it. And he said, I've never had an experience like this. But he said, I heard a voice. It wasn't audible, but it seemed like it was audible. And I know it was the voice of God. I said, wow. I said, what, what did the voice say? 
fear not my son. And then he started to tear up and cry. He said, he called me son. Fear not my son. I had the situation well in hand. I said, wow, anything else? He said, yeah. Then I saw a big red S. And I thought, what on earth? And I said, what's it mean? He said, I don't know. I'm praying about it. So we began to wonder, what's S mean? Uh, my mom had been spending time with Sandy. Sandy would go to dinner with her and different things. I thought, well, I wonder if Sandy's going to do something here and there if, if it's needed. Couldn't figure out what S meant. And after my dad passed, Solomon said, you know what, Dad? I could do a lot of this striving you're doing to get Grandma here, there, and there. And it was about a month or so into that new routine where I wasn't doing it all. I realized that red S referred to Solomon. And God really did have the situation well in hand. And my mom lacked for nothing, even though she had to live a, a widow for a number of years after my dad made the transition. There's something about a word from God that changes everything. Can you put a price on God telling you, son, daughter, I've got you? It was about a week, week and a half ago. It seemed like I was fighting battles on every front. And I just stopped for a minute. I might have been in the car. I don't remember. I just prayed just very quietly, just for a couple of minutes. And I had this inner voice come to me. It wasn't audible, but it seemed like it was audible. And it didn't come from here. It came from down here. And the voice said, I'm on your side, Joe. I don't remember the Lord ever using my given name. I'm on your side, Joe. I'm protecting you. Isn't that good news? And people don't believe in God. There's something about the voice of God that changes everything. I want you to look with me for just a few minutes about, first of all, which voice is saying what? And then, what is the only voice that matters for you, for me, for every believer? The scripture says in our text, verse 19 of Daniel 10, and he, the, the supernatural being, he was saying, do not be afraid, O very esteemed man. Don't you think Daniel felt like the Three Stooges when, gentlemen, they would turn around? Who, who came in? You greatly esteemed men. How many are glad God doesn't look at you like other people do? How many are glad today God doesn't see us like we see ourselves? I mentioned to you just recently, I saw a documentary and a particular well-known wrestler to this day says he does not like having mirrors in his house. Millionaire doesn't want to see himself. He said, I'm finally okay with my, my wrestling persona. I'm okay with that guy. But the real me with my given name, I don't know whether I'll ever be able to accept him. Do not be afraid, O very esteemed man. Other versions, you, you chosen man. Don't be afraid. You are much loved. I love this one. You are highly respected. The Speaker refers to an angelic being described very much like the Lord Jesus is described in Revelation chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. Many people have said perhaps it was the Lord Jesus visiting Daniel before he became man in the guise of what you and I know as the God-man. But think about this. The object of this word was the prophet Daniel, a mighty man of God. But let me tell you this, the word that he heard applies to you, to me, to everyone who belongs to Jesus because the master himself said in John's gospel, our father loves us exactly the same way he loves Jesus. That's a lot to take in, isn't it? That's a lot to get your arms around. But it's true, thank God, it's true. Why is the messenger likely not the Lord Jesus, Pastor. Well, it speaks of him, number one, being resisted by dark forces. It talks about him doing battle with the prince of Persia and having difficulty with the, the prince of Greece. And also says he needs assisted by the archangel Michael. How many of you know Jesus does not need any help in defeating Satan? He does not need help from angels. More than likely, this being 
was the Archangel Gabriel. Do you remember? He was the one that was sent with the message to Mary. Hail Mary, right? And one of our denominations says, see that? If angels worship her, we ought to. <laughs> oh, man, really? Are you going there? I actually heard somebody preach that from that denomination. I thought, why don't you open your Greek New Testament and read it? Gabriel said, herite. That's, you go to Greece today, you say herite. You're saying, hello, how are you? That's what Jesus said to the disciples when he rose from the dead. He wasn't worshiping them. He said, hello. You can say yasis, or if you know the person, yasu, or you can say herite. It just means hello. And the angel Gabriel continued with Mary. Hello there. You're greatly loved. You're greatly set apart by God, right? You're going to bear the Messiah. And what did Mary say? Be it unto me according to what? Your spoken word. Maybe you were here, maybe you weren't when I preached on that, but I'll just throw it in free of charge. That's kind of a play on words. The word that the angel used not only means let something happen, but it actually means let something come to birth. So Mary was virtually answering him, let what you said to me come to pass. Let him be born in me. Isn't that awesome? Gabriel gets around. If you see him, tell him I said I appreciate him. He gets around. And what did he say to Daniel? What is God saying to you and to me? What is his voice reverberating about? He said, fear not. I love the, the Greek version. It says, me fovu anir. Stop fearing. Not just don't be afraid. Stop fearing. Can't you picture Daniel like you, like me, with his knees knocking, with this angelic being who's covered in fire, whose voice is like the voice of many waters? Can't you imagine him shrinking back? And what does he say? Me fovu. Stop fearing, Anir. Stop fearing, man. Do you know what, beloved? In Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, that is exactly what Jesus said to John. John was so afraid when he saw the glorified Christ. The Bible says, I fell at his feet as dead. And what did Jesus say? He reached out, the Bible says, and placed the hand, the right one, on John's head and said, Me fovu, stop fearing. I hear the Lord saying that to the body of Christ all over America and around the world. Get out of fear. Get out of fear. Get into faith. Stop fearing. Me fovu. And Jesus in Revelation added, Ego imi. I, I am Yahweh in the flesh. And I love this. He added, O protos, the first, ke o esotos. And the last, that doesn't leave much, does it? Elsewhere in the book of Revelation, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and he's all the letters in between. He's got the whole alphabet. Amen? Here's the voice of encouragement. It came through an angel, but it came nonetheless from the heart of God. Peace to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. I think that's the hallmark of a word from God. It's always going to encourage. It's always going to build you up. It's always going to promise you the dawn of the new day. It's always going to show you a tableland of grace you and I haven't even tasted yet. It's always going to remind us that the best is yet to come. Did you know in the New Testament we find this concept of peace toward us? Voiced by Peter, the apostle, in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 36. There's Peter preaching to those pagan Italians in the household of Cornelius. And he's preaching along and telling them the gospel you've heard. Read it sometime. They were already saved before Peter ever got there. The gospel you all know. He's preaching what they've already heard and believed, but were afraid to embrace completely for fear that it wouldn't work for them because they weren't Jewish folk. They were saved, but they were confused. They needed confirmed in their faith. And what did Peter say, among other things? The word which he sent to the sons of Israel, announcing the good news, peace by Jesus Christ. I love this one. This one is Lord of all. Read that sometimes. Acts 10, 36. He could have said he, aftos. He is Lord of all. That would have been fine. Uses a demonstrative pronoun, utos. This one, 
What are you saying, Peter? This Jesus is unlike any other Jesus you have ever heard of or seen in your life. He's the one and only Son of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now listen to the result of Daniel hearing this voice. The voice of God through the angel Gabriel. And when he is speaking with me, I was transferred to a place of strength. And I was saying, my master, may he speak because you have brought me into a place of strength. Wow. I'm out of the fire. You snatched me out. I thought my ticket had been punched. I thought I had left the premises. Your countenance, the glory of God on you, frightened me so much I thought I was going to die. But you spoke, and when you spoke, everything changed. When the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my dad, fear not, my son. I have the situation well in hand. You might be going, but I've got a red S I can draft anytime I need him. He's a good boy when he's sleeping. No, he will take care of things, right? And God's got a red S for you or a red J or a red T or someone to stand in the gap and make up the hedge for you and for me too. You believe that? Listen to what Peter said along this line in the New Testament. Jesus had been talking about you and I needing him just like we need bread. You and I depending on him just like we do water. And a lot of the people that heard it couldn't stick it. They did not want to listen to that kind of dependence on an invisible God. And Jesus looked around and he looked at his disciples and said, Will you also go? Will you also leave and look for another mentor, another rabbi, another teacher who isn't so so demanding of faith and trust in himself? And what did Peter say? John 6, 68, I think we can put these words in our mouths too. Peter turned and said to Jesus in response, Lord, toward whom? Shall we be going with the goal of following? You are having the sayings of life eternal in quality. John 6, 68. Think about that. There's no one else in this world or any other that speaks like you do. You speak and we're transferred from a place of fear into a place of confidence, into a place of protection. Peter The way he responded, he's talking about who will we leave you to follow in the train of some other mentor or life coach. He understood what you and I need to be reminded of. We're no good on our own. Have you ever seen a sheep in real life? They're amazing. Amazingly stupid. Why did God liken us to sheep? I'm so glad he did. They have no clue what they're doing, where they're going. Or where they came from. They're just hanging around. Looking for some grass. They need a shepherd. They need a shepherd. They're not predators. They're prey animals. You and I are spiritual prey. We're like horses. Right? We're not tigers or lions. We're like horses. We're like sheep. We're prey. We need someone to look after us. We need someone to protect us. I was downtown the other day. And I heard some... People shouting, and I thought the next thing I'm going to hear is gunshots. But I was already on my walk, and I wanted to give up my walk, you know, because I got this little gizmo. Keeps track of how many steps, you know. I, I sometimes see my doctor's face just up here, you know, waiting to see what I'm going to do, you know. You dead beat. Are you going to cut it short, or are you going to take the full walk, you know? I can't order at a restaurant. There he is, you know. Hamburger? No, no. <laughs> I told Solomon every day at McDonald's, there it is. McChicken. Little, right? Cheap. I can get McChicken and a senior coffee for under two bucks. What would you like? I see Solomon's head floating up there. Uh, Oatmeal. (laughs) 
every once in a while it builds up too much, you know. I, there's the head floating, you know, waiting. What kind of, what would you like? Fish sandwich, <laughs> you know, no. Uh, every once in a while, guy's got to live. Uh, how in the world did I get on that? I have no idea. Wow. I was walking downtown. Yeah, thanks, babe. I was walking downtown, and I heard a real big-time argument. You know, it was getting up towards sort of a rough area. And I was going to be turning anyway, but I thought, wow, hmm. And suddenly, suddenly, I had that image that I received, bless your holy name, Lord, on a Wednesday night after the Wednesday night class, after the Lord's Supper. I had a mini vision here. I actually preached about it. If you weren't here, please get that message, the wings of a dove. It'll change your life. Changed mine. I had this experience where the Spirit of the Lord came upon someone, and I saw what it actually looks like and what happens. And that came back to me as I'm walking up Vine Street. Suddenly, I realized I'm, I'm not alone. I should say I remembered. I'm not alone. And I remembered that image the Lord gave me of what really happens when a believer is baptized in the Holy Ghost. The the heavenly dove comes just like he did for Jesus and rests upon the believer and never, ever, ever, ever leaves. And that dove that rests upon the believer is not some little dove about the size of a pigeon. The dove that I saw was man-sized and then some. The dove that I saw was taller than the person he had come upon. And there's the person's head, and then there's the dove's head up top of that. And those wings were huge. And he put the wings around that person who had received the Holy Ghost. And that head was here, and the eyes were like a flame of fire, red and orange. And I saw his head almost doing 360. I can't describe to you, I wish I could. I think about this as often as I can. I can't describe to you the absolute absolute ownership in the eyes of that dove, scanning the horizon for anyone or anything that would dare to harm the one that he's protecting. 24-7, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us and watching and waiting and protecting and defending and leading and guiding and speaking words of comfort. And I walked, I put my shoulders back and I walked into the fray. I thought, argue, yell, whatever you want to do. I'm going to the next corner. I'm covered by the wings of this dove and his eyes are a flame of fire. And if I need protected, he'll protect me. Bless God. What a way to live. Next time you walk into a room, walk with your head held high. Picture yourself behind those huge wings. Picture that dove's head over top of yours, just kind of looking 360 and keeping you completely safe from harm. He loves us more than any words of any language could communicate. He's got you. Believe it. Let's move on to the only voice that matters. God's desire to communicate with us, whether through an angel or the Bible or another kind of text somewhere or a song or a sight or a sound, it's a through line throughout the whole Bible. In Genesis 3, 8, here's what we read in the beginning of things. And they, Adam and Eve, were hearing the sound of Yahweh God walking around in the garden at the breeze of the day. And the man and his wife they were hiding from the face of Yahweh God in the middle of the trees of the garden. Do you know, I looked this up, and the Greek version uses the word phoni for sound. They heard the phoni. In other words, it wasn't necessarily the leaves as Yahweh walked being pushed out of the way or, or branches blowing in the breeze. It was the voice of Yahweh, phoni. It was his voice speaking. What was he saying? Same thing he's been saying for 6,000 years since. I love that the Greek person says, Adam, Bui, Adam, where you are, where you is. Adam, where are you? You know what? Our answer is still the same. I have no idea. <laughs> you, ask, you ask the average ham and egger out there where they're going, they have no idea. They don't know where they came from, no idea why they're here, and not a clue about what's next. Because holding on to anything in this fallen world is like trying to grasp sand. 
done work. But we're still wanted by him. He's looking for us. Adam, Puyi, where are you? I remember years ago we went to a, a restaurant with Brother Jimmy when I was in Greece. And he walks into this crowded restaurant. And he put, I could see him putting on his poker face. I thought, oh, here we go. He, he went like this to the maitre d'. The guy walks over. I hear him talking in Greek, you know. And one of the things I heard him say was, Puyi Yorgo. Puyi Yorgo. He was asking, where's George? And I thought, what's this? Who's George? And they're going back and forth. And the guy's face lights up like a Christmas tree. Pushes us through the crowd and gives us a great, great table Sunday afternoon. Place is jammed. There we are. And Yanni's wife said, Jimmy, what you're doing? What? I, I said, who's, who's George? And he, Brother Joe, I told him, the last time I'm here, wonderful man named Yorgos said, next time you're here, just ask for me. I get you the best table. I said, oh, wow. I said, so that really happened? No, of course not. They made it up now. I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> Fortunately, there was a George there. And the maitre d' knew him, so off we went. Adam, Adam, Pui. They said it in Hebrew, of course, but I like the Greek version. It's beautiful, isn't it? And how about this voice, the voice of the enemy? The voice of the enemy. Think about this. You can write this down if you want. I found this fascinating. You say, we'll be the judge of that. The voice of Satan, think about this, and his crowd does three things. It confuses, it excuses, and then it accuses. You want to find out a truth of the Bible and what it really means? Go to the first place it's mentioned, right? This is the first place Satan is actually mentioned interacting with mankind. And this is what he said. Has God said? Right? Has God said? You, you shouldn't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and eat. What is that? That is to confuse a simple and clear fact. Has God said? He confuses you. He confuses me. Secondly, he said, he knows that when you eat from that tree, you'll be like him, knowing good and evil. What was that about? He's excusing direct disobedience to a crystal clear command. He knows you'll be like him, knowing good and evil. He's excusing you and I. Disobeying God's word. And the third thing he said, you shall not surely die. What did he do there? He basically accused God of holding out on them and being jealous of Adam and Eve. He accused God of being jealous of his own creation. You shall not surely die. He, he confuses, then he excuses, and then he accuses. And after they fall, that's after you fall. After I fall, what does he do? <laughs> Points the finger. He gets you to do it, and then he makes fun of you after you make the mistake. He is, he is absolutely merciless, isn't he? You can apply these three ideas to any form of sinful behavior, and it always results in the same thing, ruin. Satan gets the gold mine, you and I get the shaft. Satan's voice confuses, then excuses, and then accuses. How would you like to move along to the only voice that matters? That's God's voice. Amen? God's voice, whether it comes through an angel, direct, in a dream, in a vision, from the scripture, from a sight, from a sound, from an experience, from a circumstance. doesn't matter how it comes or when it comes. It brings peace. It brings strength. It brings hope. It brings protection. It brings comfort. Thankfully, Paul in the New Testament identifies, clearly identifies, the voice of God. Who is the voice of God? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 and following. And receive salvation as your helmet and the spirit as your sword. Who is the voice of God? who is the voice of God through each and every kind of prayer and supplication, praying in each and every season by means of the Spirit and watching unto him in this very thing with all prayer and supplication for all the saints of God. The Spirit of the Lord is the voice of God, and he now lives on the inside of us so that our voice can become his voice. How many are glad? Hallelujah. 
you and I, according to Peter, can speak as the oracles of God. Jesus said, it's no longer you that speak. It's the spirit of your father speaking by means of you. What did they say of, what did they say of Stephen? Never heard anything like this. He looks like an angel. Let me tell you a couple of things as we close today that the psalmist said about God's voice in chapter 29, Psalm 29. In verse 3, the psalmist said, The voice of Yahweh is on the waters. Yahweh, the God of glory, he has thundered on many waters. Do you really think the psalmist is talking about God's ability to stir up wind and waves? Oh, he might be, but I rather doubt it. Search the scripture. Waters, plural, Seas, plural, often are symbolic of humanity. Where is Yahweh's voice? Upon the waters. Right? Man proposes, God disposes. Man plans, God laughs. God is in control and only is God is in control. God's voice, the Holy Spirit, is on the waters. His voice thunders among the people. Praise God. He continues in Psalm 29 by reminding us that God's voice is noble. It's truthful. It's glorious. One version says his voice is strength itself. What did Daniel say? You spoke and transferred me to a place of strength. I'm walking downtown. Trouble fixing to happen. I remembered the voice of God, his Holy Spirit came upon me in the fall of 1974. He's never left. I didn't know exactly what happened or what it looked like, but I do now. And I'm completely covered 24-7 by those wings <laughs> that are bigger than you could ever imagine. And on top of those wings is that mighty head and those piercing eyes that are scanning the horizon, protecting you and me and every child of God. How many believe it? The Bible says the voice of God, the voice of God breaks the cedars. Can God speak and a, and a tree limb come down? Of course. About a month ago, I was walking down around the barn, around the paddock there where the horses are kept. Big old log right across the pathway. I mean, the thing was huge. All it took was a little storm. And that huge, that huge tree trunk <laughs> went down. Can God do that? Of course he can. You think that's what he's really talking about? Probably not. Judges 9.15 uses the cedar as a symbol of a fierce warrior. Guess what? God is fiercer still. He just inhales and that fierce warrior disappears. Why I oughta? Where did he go? I see his clothes. I see. How many are glad he's that way? Would you like one more? Psalm 29, verse 7. Save the best for last. What else does God's voice do, psalmist? Yahweh's voice divides a flame of fire. Did you get that? Yahweh's voice, who is the Holy Spirit, Yahweh's voice divides a flame of fire. It is nearly identical to Acts 2.3. When the day of Pentecost fully came, they were all assembled in one place and there came a sound like the rushing mighty wind and that sound filled the place where they were assembled and there was a ball of fire and the scripture says the ball of fire divided itself among the 120 and a tongue of fire rested on the head of every one. It divided itself. Think about this. Thousands of years before that ever happened, the psalmist got a picture in advance. Yahweh's voice, the Holy Spirit, divides a flame of fire. And because of that, every spirit-filled believer has the voice of God, the Holy Spirit, on the inside. And you and I are able to speak the manifest works of God. We're able to speak supernaturally in praise and honor and glory of God. According to Paul, we're able to speak revelation and words of knowledge and prophetic words and even teachings that come straight from the heart of God to our spirit, from our spirit, out our mouth to the people of God and the whole body of Christ is edified. How awesome is that? Yahweh's voice divides 
the flame of fire. He split himself among 120, and he was still complete. He's still giving himself away 2,000 years later. Until today, about a half a billion people are clothed with his wings and protected by his all-seeing eye. Thank God. After thousands and thousands and thousands of years of human history, we've got the voice of man. We've got the voice of our flesh. We've got the voice of Satan and his crowd, the voice of a fallen world system. And we've got the only voice that matters, the voice of God. Thank you, Father, for, for your wonderful Holy Spirit who is your voice, in Paul's language, your spoken word, your rima theu, your flowing presence to edify, to build up, to protect, to defend, to teach, to lead, to guide, to comfort. Thank you, Lord, for this one who speaks and we are strengthened, who lifts us up when we're down, who visits us in the night seasons with dreams that make us wiser than our enemies. Thank you for the one that moves on our brothers and sisters in Christ to share a revelation with us or a word of knowledge, to grant us a prophetic word or share with us a teaching that came right from your throne. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the voice, the only voice that really matters in this life or the next. We pray a blessing on people who have a heart for the full gospel message. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for those who pray and attend and support and serve. We pray for those, Lord, especially who sacrifice in their giving so that the whole world can hear the whole word. We're asking for a harvest to come to them where they need it most. Let it be a thousand times over. Bless us as we come around your table. Minister to us, Lord, through the spoken word as you first did when you made the first application of the Lord's Supper following that Passover. As these elements are distributed, as they are received, Lord, as the words of institution are spoken, Holy Spirit, thank you for making the miracle take place the living flesh and blood of our Savior will suddenly be in with and under this bread and cup so we can dine on deity. We love you and we thank you for who you are and all that you've done in your wonderful name. Amen. If you're given moving on the waters Who is holding up the moon Who is peeling back the darkness With the burning light of noon Who 
was standing on the mountains Who is on the earth below Who is bigger than the heavens And the lover of my soul Creator God, He is Yahweh The great I am, He is Yahweh Sharon, he is Yahweh, the righteous son, he is Yahweh, the three in one, he is Yahweh. Who is he that makes me happy? Who is he that gives me peace? Who is he that brings me comfort and turns the bitter into Stirring up my passion Who is rising up in me Who is filling up my hunger With everything I need Creator God, He is Yahweh The great I am, He is Yahweh The Lord of all, He is Yahweh Of Sharon, he is Yahweh, the righteous son, he is Yahweh, the three in one, he is Yahweh. You are holy and eternal, and forever you will reign. Every knee will bow before you, every tongue will confess your name. All the angels give you glory As they stand before your throne While here on earth we gather To declare your name alone
for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is being broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after the supper and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in memory of me. Jesus walked out of that grave. I'm walking to. There ain't no grave. No, no, no. Gonna hold my body down. There ain't no grave. No, no, no. Gonna hold my body down. Gonna get up out of that ground. Yeah. Cause there ain't no grave, no, no. Gonna hold my body down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this service. Thank you for these prophetic words. They are profound. Thank you, Lord, for your voice. Thank you for the wonderful word of God that shows us all of these things about your voice. Thanks for speaking to us through your wonderful word. Hallelujah. Thank you for a beautiful, beautiful future, Lord. Thank you for certainty. We came from you. We're here to know you and make you known. We're going back to you. Yahweh, may he bless us and protect us. Yahweh, may he make his face shine on us and be gracious and merciful toward us. Yahweh, may he lift up his countenance upon us and grant us his shalom. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming. There's coffee out there.